My name is Hugh. Uh, this is my first CPP con. This is also my first time speaking professionally at any kind of conference, so if it's a bit rough, I apologize beforehand. I wrote a library called C++ Requests. How many of you in the audience uh, have used Python before? Just show of hands. And of those people who are raising their hands, how many have used the request module by Kenneth Reitz? OK, awesome. Um, this is a spiritual port of that module, which is another way of saying I stole it. Um, you, can find the, you can find the repository here. Please star it, fork it, and contribute to it. It's very young. Uh, it's only a few months old, but I think I believe that I have a core API that is both elegant and practical. C++ request is a high-level client-side HTTP library, and that requires us to understand what HTTP is at a high level. In my opinion, HTTP at, at a high level is about verbs. You know, you do things like, get me this page, put this data here, delete this user. And that's it. If that seems naive, that's because it is. Of course, any kind of client-side HTTP library should have support for authentication, headers, proxies, cookies, and sessions. But if you allow me to be aspirational and really ambitious here in Reach, I believe that HTTP should be as simple as a print statement. I believe that, and so does Kenneth Reitz, the person who said that first. Um, so let's try to imagine what HTTP as a print statement would look like if we can imagine the core of HTTP, HTTP with an example, such as making a simple git request and printing the response text, what should that kind of API look like? Um, and so I've developed an API that hopefully can encapsulate that sort of essence. You have a URL, uh, I'm using a service called HTTP bin, it's written by Kenneth kind of Reitz again. Um, we call a, we, we use a git request, a git function, and that just pings the URL and gets you the response and you can print it immediately. Compare this to the equivalent call in libcurl. So if you've programmed in C before and you've had to do networking, there's a good chance you've used libcurl and as you can see at the very top, there's a void star pointer. Uh, that's required for doing any kind of capturing of the response and that's the easy interface. This is apparently what you're supposed to do in C. The comparison is a little bit uh, unfair because libcurl is a C library, so let's actually look at a C++ library. Um, has anyone heard of the library, the framework called POCO? It stands for Portable Components. Is there a maintainer of POCO in this audience? Anyone who works or would be offended if I said anything about it? <laughs> so, POCO is not a bad library. It's, it's very well written and thoroughly tested, but the API is not written for people. When I use POCO, I feel like I'm talking to a computer. I'm a client, there's a server, I send this request object, and I get a response object back. So let's look at the same example for the simple git request using POCO. And remember, this is a C++ library. Ignore the verbosity for a bit, and let's just kind of examine the semantics of what's going on here. At the very start, you have a URI object, which is sort of a generalization of a URL, uh, and you pass it the string. It seems pretty reasonable to me. Then you have a session, which you need to pass the host and the port from the URI, you create a request object using the, the HTTP method you want to use, which is git. You have a string path. You pass in the HTTP version. And then at that point, you can send the request. That's one half of using POCO. Getting the response requires you to instantiate a response object, to receive it from the session as an input string, or as an input stream, to instantiate an output stream and then copy the input stream to the output stream and then call the string method on the output stream and print it out. That's the same, that's the same request that we did earlier in our imaginary API. There are seven nouns here participating in several different APIs. And when I tell you that I think that HTTP is a, a verb-centric language, the issue with thinking about it in terms of nouns interacting is that the mental model required to actually keep track of everything is very high. These are all the methods we, methods we use to actually do all of these things. These are several different APIs, and individually they make sense. Like a URI, should, you should be able to get a, a port from it or a host from it. You know, a session should be able to send a request and receive a response. But the, the issue is that the context requirement is, is so high that 
if, for instance, you, you call send response twice, you're not sure what's going to happen. If you call receive response twice, are you copying data, are you duplicating data, you're not sure what's going to happen. And so what I want and what I built is an AT HTTP API for people. It's client side, and I want the objects in this API to participate in a single request verb. That means that the way you map your programmer intent is through a single API, a single function call, and use the objects to kind of modular, m modulate what happens inside the internals of that call. I also want the steps to get the response to be minimal. So it sh you shouldn't have to jump through any hoops or do stream copying to actually get the response. That's ultimately what we care about the most. And finally, I want it to be useful in 95% of use cases. The example I gave earlier of the, of the get request is a little bit academic. You're gonna need a little bit more power and you need to flesh out the API a bit more. So I'm going to go through a few examples of actual uses of the API and how we handle them uh, using objects and parameters. So if you want to make a query parameter, you simply pass in this object called parameters. It's a dictionary-like object, so you just instantiate it with these double braces, you give it a key and a value, it handles all of the URL encoding and, and the appending to the URL that you need to do, um, and it does it transparent, it does it automatically for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Authentic authentication is easy as well. You just pass in a user and a password. Uh, if you want to change the scheme, you just say, I want to use digest authentication, and it does it, it, does it for you uh, behind the scenes. Here we're seeing the same kind of dictionary-like constructor again for headers, and that's, that makes sense because a header is just a mapping from some key to a number of values. Uh, we can do the same thing with posts. So these are URL-encoded posts. So these will get attached to the end of the URL. If you have a longer post, you just call it a multi-part post. And so this is not a long string, but if it were a long string, it would use a different, it would use a URL, it would use a multi-part uh, form post to actually send the request. And adding a file should be easy as well. So you just instantiate this file object, you give it a path, you give it a name, it reads it behind the scenes and sends it up for you. Of course, you can send more complex requests by mixing and matching these parameters. You just throw them into the request verb and the objects kind of settle themselves and handle themselves. And with some template magic, we get orderless arguments basically for free. So all of these make the same exact requests you don't have to worry about the order in which you're passing these arguments in, as long as all the arguments are there when you're making the actual request. So we started with a very simple premise that HTTP is, a, is at a high level about verbs. The objects that participate in that verb help communicate the intent of the programmer, and the language that emerges from this interaction of these objects and verbs is the API. If you can imagine that an API is a rung on an abstraction ladder, and at the very bottom, you have electrons and neutrons and signals and uh, you know, basically physics. You step a little bit higher, you'll, you'll start to see bits and sockets. And then you get to HTTP, which is, by definition, a client-server client uh, networking protocol. You go a little bit higher than that, and you get the core API of C++ requests. But that's not the only thing my library does. We can step a bit lower and get sessions basically for free, because this is what the core API uses to actually implement all of these requests. And if you step higher than that and kind of go above the abstraction, because HTTP is a verb, we can do it asynchronously. So we can handle the response at some later time when it's convenient. We can also pass a callback so that when we actually get the response, we're calling some custom function. Uh, here it's just a lambda that takes a response, but it could be any kind of function object. We can do all of this because the core API is encapsulating a single powerful concept that HTTP can be considered as a verb-centric language, and we need an API that speaks our language because, after all, developers are people too. You should be using APIs that speak your language. It makes it easier to communicate your intent, and this is an API for people. This is my library. It's called C++ Requests. Find it here. Thank you.